Welcome everybody to Go Local Live. It is a sunny day and I think we need it today in Providence, Rhode Island. National job numbers are out and the market lost uh, over 3 million jobs nationally. The, by, uh, the biggest job loss in a single week by, or, uh, by a magnitude of four times. Uh, joining me today is Daryl West, Vice President at the Brookings Institution. Uh, Daryl, how are you today? I'm doing well, Josh. It's nice to be with you. Yes, as always. Um, listen, you, you called it early. Uh, you wrote a book uh, a little bit ago called The Future of Work, which really looks at how work is transforming, how uh, robots, driverless cars, AI you know, is going to have a mammoth impact on how we produce, how we work with each other. And all of a sudden, in about two weeks, everybody has learned Zoom and how to Skype and is working from their home and the workforce just lost millions of folks in a, in a record time. Um, g give us your overview of where we are today. I mean, I think you're right. Uh, we are now seeing the coronavirus really accelerate this trend to digital platforms and the digital economy. Uh, I have become an expert on uh, Zoom. I'd never really used it very much uh, prior to the last uh, few weeks, but it's a great platform. You can have uh, meetings and uh, webinars on it. We've been doing uh, online uh, forums. Uh, but I think what the coronavirus is doing is just really forcing people to innovate. Uh, because with all of the uh, work from home uh, requirements, uh, certainly in D.C., uh, all of us are now uh, telecommuting. Uh, but we're actually finding it works uh, pretty well. We're still writing papers, posting uh, blog uh, 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 pieces, uh, doing uh, media interviews, and uh, hosting uh, online uh, forums. So uh, I do worry just in terms of what it's going to mean for joblessness uh, in that book. I did uh, kind of note that technology innovation could end up requiring fewer workers, and as a country, we're going to have to grapple with that. And this recession actually may uh, make that a reality even uh, more quickly than I had anticipated. Yeah, I think that that's clearly uh, going to raise some concerns as let's just use a accounting firm just sent everyone home. They had 50 employees, maybe some of those administrative people that were key when you were in the office now becomes less important to your business model uh, as the recovery hopefully begins in some period of time. It's, employers are going to say, well, maybe I don't need those seven positions. Uh, anymore. Will we see that uh, that dumping of the workforce that will further uh, draw out our economic recovery? I mean, I think what this crisis is going to do is to lead to the flattening of organizations because, as you just pointed out, there are a lot of organizations that have a number of mid-level supervisors whose job is just to make sure everybody else is doing their own job. But in a digital world, you actually don't need those mid-level supervisors because through online metrics and other uh, online uh, indicators, you can actually see if the frontline people are uh, doing their uh, job. So you don't need as many supervisors. Uh, you can eliminate uh, some of those uh, mid-levels. So I do believe this crisis will accelerate that type of organizational change and uh, just lead a lot of organizations to rethink how they are doing their day-to-day -day business. You've looked at the nature of work for a long time. You spent a lot of time in China looking at how technology is transforming workplaces through robotics, through AI. Uh, what will our workplace look like in the next 24, 36 months? I think it's going to be more decentralized. So the pandemic has forced people to work out of their homes. Uh, I think telework will become much more uh, prevalent. Uh, there's certainly are going to be threats to bricks and mortar establishments, uh, small businesses, uh, retail outlets, and uh, so on. I mean, the pandemic has basically force the closure of non-essential uh, businesses. And so uh, people are now uh, buying their products uh, online. They're getting services uh, online. So for sectors that can make that type of transition to the digital world, uh, they can do just fine. But there are going to be some businesses that are lost because they cannot migrate to digital platforms. And those are the ones that are going to be at risk even after the virus starts to dissipate. Listen, we're 10 years old. We've always been a digital platform. We've never known anything else, and over the past few years, we've transformed to being a 
uh, digital video platform as well. Uh, how will other companies who have, you know, they've got to stay in business. Owners have got to figure this out. Are we built in the United States today well enough to innovate? Um, you know, I, I've talked to all, all our partners, our advertisers, and say this is, this is a great opportunity to begin to innovate how you do business. I think young companies and companies that are staffed by young people will easily make that migration because they've grown up with digital technology, they're comfortable with it, they know the capacities that are there, so it will be a pretty easy transition for them. The companies and organizations that are going to have problems are the older companies, the legacy companies, you know, well-known brands that, that may have been around for uh, decades, uh, but because of their brand name, they did not have to innovate uh, over the years, and they are slow uh, in terms of this uh, transition to the digital economy. So, you know, they have a little bit of time to figure it out, but the timeline is going to be short because the world has uh, changed, and organizations that are not able to migrate to digital platforms are going to be in trouble in the long run. Um, Congress was looking at, uh, specifically, David Cicilline, uh, the chair of a subcommittee of, uh, of the House, was looking at significant reforms of the tech giants, uh, Facebook, Google, Amazon, etc. cetera. Uh, right now, Amazon is feeding America. Uh, Facebook is informing America. What happens to that initiative coming out of the House, led by Democrats, to take on big tech? I think there certainly is a lot more interest in antitrust law and just how competitive our current environment is. Because as you point out, a lot of these digital platforms have either gained monopoly power or real dominance over particular uh, sectors. It's certainly true with Amazon, with Facebook, with uh, Google, and other uh, large uh, tech companies. And so, you know, we're not seeing a lot of competition in uh, some of those sectors. And so uh, members of Congress are starting to look at this. You know, we've been in a period of several uh, decades where American public policy towards technology has been pretty libertarian, uh, meaning the government has pretty much kept its hands off and basically said to the tech companies, you know, you innovate whenever you want, however you want, and with whatever products uh, you want. I think that era is starting to come to a close. Uh, people now see the problems of disinformation on social media, anti-competitive practices from various uh, tech companies, and so people are starting to look at the public policy angles on this and asking, whether we need more uh, oversight. A number of these tech companies have been subject to multi, multi million dollar fines from the Federal Trade uh, Commission. Uh, and so there clearly is going to be a lot more scrutiny of how this transition to the digital economy is going to take place. Uh, what's your sense of events, uh, business meetings? Um, jump on a plane and be in London tomorrow and have a sit down with five people which was becoming the norm in, in, in global business. It, does that freeze? Do we ever go back to that? Or does that thaw out as it did post 9-11, which it took a period of time, but then ultimately it returned? I think a lot of organizations are going to rethink that model of physically traveling to other places in order to hold uh, meetings. I mean, you know, we've discovered that either through Skype or Zoom or other uh, digital platforms, you actually have the same immediacy of talking to people. Uh, you know, there's almost no lag in the uh, communications. And so uh, you can basically have uh, what looks like a real time conversation, even if it's taking place. Uh, over uh, one of these uh, platforms. So, uh, I mean, I certainly have noticed, you know, we have a, a travel ban uh, here, but I'm still doing a lot of uh, meetings through uh, digital platforms. How much more efficient it is, you know, how much time is saved on my part as well as on the parts of other people. You're saving time, you're saving uh, money. And so I think a lot of companies having had that experience uh, just because of the pandemic are going to think, hey, you know, this is a new model. It, it can work in, in the future. Video conferencing uh, is a great uh, substitute for physically traveling and you save both time and money in the process. Uh, last but not least, what have you done with your Tom Brady jersey? Will that be in any way still a memorabilia to you or will it be destroyed as an, uh, an, in an outrage uh, against his signing with the T 
Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I am definitely keeping my Tom Brady, New England Patriots uh, uh, paraphernalia. Uh, still a big fan of uh, Tom. Uh, I certainly don't blame him for uh, leaving. I blame the organization more for uh, letting him uh, leave. Uh, but I think uh, they are not uh, scheduled to face each other in the coming uh, year. So unless both teams make the Super Bowl, I will not have to choose between Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. <laughs> Daryl, thank you so much for joining us today. As always, uh, you're ahead of the curve, years ahead of the curve, and I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, everyone else will be back uh, at 11 o'clock with uh, the director of the Department of Labor and Training in Rhode Island, probably the busiest man, 60 through yesterday, 62,000 Rhode Islanders had filed for unemployment in 15 days. Uh, we'll be back with that segment at 11. Thanks everybody for tuning in.